Hey everyone, it's Lawrence here, freshly back from TwitchCon. Actually, not freshly, that was a couple of weeks ago. This is kind of delayed, and I'll get into why in a bit, but first, I wanna talk about TwitchCon. I went to a couple of interesting panels, which I gotta admit, I wasn't expecting. I went in pretty cynical, because I went to the first couple of Twitch, I think I went to 2017, and it was small, and there wasn't a whole lot going on, but I gotta say, this year was pretty vibrant and pretty interesting. I picked up a lot of cool shirts, I'm bringing that up now, because I wanna start showing them off. But like I said, I went to a couple of interesting panels. Uh, I went to one about ergonomics and fitness, which really just kind of reaffirmed some of the dedications to posture and fitness and, and stretching and all these things that I've been adopting slowly as I've been getting older. Good news is for me is that it's just motivated me more to work that into the stream. So now I've have, I have like a semi-regular like stretch break, exercise break. It makes me feel better. It's a nice to take a little breath and hopefully some of the audience gets a little limber too. I've also been experimenting with multi-streaming to TikTok. They've been pushing it pretty hard these past couple of days. It's an interesting system. Very uh, obvious skated. So essentially users buy gifts with coins. They give those gifts to you. The coin value of those gifts is then converted into diamonds and then you can cash out those diamonds in a currency withdrawal. But you don't know how many coins are worth how many diamonds and you don't know how many diamonds are worth how many dollars and it shifts around. Apparently it could shift around rapidly because any information I found on the internet was dead wrong. They just added subscriptions on TikTok too. So uh, I've been experimenting there. I don't know if you're on that app more but you'll probably catch me live on that app a little more often. I'm curious to see what the scene's like. People have been actually pretty nice so far. Chat's actually been pretty cool, so I'm looking forward to exploring it more. While I was in San Diego, I went to three, count them, three tiki places. Valley High, Mothership, and False Idol. Ugh, what a great weekend. Wonderful meals and wonderful drinks. I will say though, these places are like pretty low lit, right? Uh, I was at False Idol and there was this couple that came in. It's like this, it was actually kind of like two couples and they were, you know, young and attractive and they were taking like photos with full flash and not just like five, not just 10. Cause I could just be like, yeah, whatever, you know, auto flash, whoops. See, everybody gets everybody gets one, right? But they were just going for it. Like full flash every they were taking full albums and they were like hitting me with it over and over and over again. So I think this is maybe this is me graduating up into being old and crotchety. I just whipped out my phone and hit them with my flashlight, put the spotlight on them to give them some lighting. They took a few photos with it and then they kind of turned away and then they started taking photos in another direction. So I don't know, maybe I made them feel self-conscious. I kind of hope so. I made them visit their damn flash on somebody else. The good news is they were gone in like 10 minutes, but still interesting interaction. <laughs> in the time since since I've been back from TwitchCon, I've been very busy. I watched Dracula 2000 and Dracula 3000. So I think I've seen the most Draculas, mathematically speaking. There's so many memories flooding back. I think high notes in Dracula 2000 to the uh, liberal placement of the Virgin Megastore. It is clearly where all the world's cool teens hang out and it's where Dracula goes to scoop up, well, virgins kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Special shout out to Dracula 3000 for Coolio's performance. Coolio's in the great coffin in the sky. But I gotta say, uh, he actually did kind of swing for the fences in that movie. He put a lot of energy into being a wacky vampire. And he had to wear these like big colored contacts. So that would probably was uncomfortable. So shout outs to you, Coolio. You really sold Dracula 3000. Also, there's like a comical literal Dracula in that movie. High collars and everything. He doesn't go but, but he should. All right, so if you're still watching, congratulations. You've made it to the secret part of the video that I just buried on purpose. Uh, yeah, a lot of Rooster Teeth stuff blew up. I didn't trust myself to not talk about it because I don't know. I thought about it a lot. I realized that I just could not see a path where anything good would happen to the people that I still care about and support if I said anything. So I didn't. Just kept my mouth shut. There's not really a reason beyond that that I can think of to, to add to any of it. So no twit longers for me. I will say that just from my perspective, something that's that's caused me to sort of vastly change the way that I see the world is being put in a situation where the people that I, I love and support, when their fates are tied to people that I very much do not support. So it's tough. It's a tough situation to be in. You can't selectively do anything to one without affecting the other. And it puts you just in a, in a really tough spot. So that's part of being an adult, I guess. Uh, I will say that's a joy of being fully independent is that I'm allowed to say no to bad business and I'm allowed to say no to bad people if I want to. So that's great. In the end, I'm not I'm not super thrilled about the negative attention it threw towards people that that didn't do anything, don't deserve to be at the center of that. But from a very selfish perspective, I am looking forward to just not seeing any more comments expressing that they miss particular individuals or that were just mm, didn't like how dramatic I was being. Like, hopefully, hopefully that stuff just goes away for good. I could I could go a very long while without seeing that stuff ever again. All right, this week on the stream, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get around to Splatterhouse. Still got that. Still got this guy right here. This is a this is a a lost gem. This is like the VHS in the back of the rental store that you have to kind of be cool with the manager to uh, to get to. It's not really all that um, controversial, but it is quite good. And I think it's got little subversive bits in there that are really interesting. I think this is kind of like 
quintessential cult horror in terms of video games. So I'm excited to play this on the stream. I hope people uh, tune in for that because I just love sharing games that, that kind of go unrecognized. On that note, I would say the rest of the <laughs> rest of the games this week aren't quite unrecognized. Uh, I got Silent Hill 2 working uh, with the enhanced edition. It was kind of tricky because everyone's downloading it now and you have to download it from their server. So it took a long time, but it's a great game. Uh, I just played the beginning of that. So hopefully going through the rest of that, finishing up Lollipop Chainsaw, going back to Cult of the Lamb because they have an update now where you can like enable drops and stuff. And then Bayonetta 3 comes out this Friday. I'm excited to start that. I played through Bayonetta 1 and 2 on the stream last week and ah. Uh. Oh, incredible experiences. So I can't wait to see three. And then this Saturday, the Saturday into Sunday is a subathon going for up to 24 hours, playing through Doom Eternal, all of Doom Eternal and both DLCs in a huge Doom celebration because it's it's Halloween-y, right? What's more Halloween than running around in a costume and shooting demons, listening to metal? It's cool stuff. Uh, that in addition, oh, hold on. <sighs> so dusty. Like the previous subathons, this one will be interspersed with chapters from the Doom novel. This is the final, the fourth of four Doom novels. End game. It's interesting. Last we left our heroes, they were on a relativistic flight to the ends of the universe to combat the demon threat right after one of the characters converted to Mormonism and finally got it in. So weird story, but I guess if I were going to, if it's the end of human civilization and I were going to fly in a time dilated relativistic flight, I would probably, man, all bets are off then. Who cares? I'll pick up whatever religion. <laughs> a lot of good games on the stream this week. A lot of good literature coming up this weekend. I hope to see you guys drop by on Twitch or TikTok or YouTube VOD over on Inside Games with Bruce. Oh, that's the other thing. That's right. We've been doing more work with Brian Gar over at Inside Games and a new guest host oh. this coming week. I don't ever want to like say anything before it happens, so I'm not. But a new guest host. Look forward to it. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to catch you next time. Bye, everybody.